Welcome to the pew. The pew. The crusty old pew. <laughs> we are talking about crusties. Crusty the clown. Not crusty the clown. No. Crusty the the astronaut. And not cronuts either. Oh, cronuts. Do you like cronuts? I love cronuts. Okay. Just remember, club kid cries over cronut. <laughs> remember that? No. No. So we're talking about crusties. Why don't we explain what crusties are for some of our? Uh, I'm not even sure myself. To me, I, to me, a crusty is like a punk rock kind of, kind of. Uh, bagger. Yeah, like a punk rock be, bagger. Like a skater, punk rocky kind of homeless, um, squatter, young, um, but good looking and very got, with a lot of style and um, and kind of chic. Right, and they're dirty yet sexy. Yeah, well, why dirty yet sexy? I don't know, because some, I'm generally turned off by dirtiness, but for some reason I find crusties to be sexy. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a, we, uh, again, I was having this conversation yesterday. The um, dirty and, and, and smelly and sweaty is actually, is, is actually meant to be sexy. That's what humans are meant to find attractive um, with your the partner or with the, 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 the thing is, when there's so many of we've been, as especially, especially as Americans, we've been taught by TV commercials and advertising that you're not supposed to smell and you're not supposed to be dirty and you're supposed to take three showers a day and you're supposed to use their product and you're supposed to spend your money in order to um, yes. remain <laughs> in order to not smell. In order to be normal. Right. <laughs> um, and not, because the pheromones are what's, are what attracts people to, and, and, and um, on, uh, on, to be, uh, play the devil's advocate, I suppose, or to be on their side for a minute, there is a point to that. You don't want to attract everybody around you. So when there's, especially when you're living in a city like New York, um, you do want to kind of turn it off you know, turn off your pheromones and so that you're not smelling to everybody, not attractive to everybody. Yeah, you know, try as hard as I may to not be attractive oh, yeah. to everybody. And somehow, I just can't help it. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the reason we're talking about crusties is because there's an exhibition right now at this gallery in New York City. It's called the Daniel Cooney Fine Art Gallery. Mm. And it's all about crusties by this photographer named Michael Joseph. And the crusties look really hot. We're going to show some photos of the crusties on screen. Uh, we were just admiring how attractive they look. Although Michael thinks that that's going to be a fleeting beauty. Yes, um, uh, because um, I've I've seen it. You know, I've been, I've lived in this kind of scene. There, the crusties are were kind of a peripheral. Um, seen living on the outskirts of the Disco 2000 and some other scenes, NASA, I think. Um, and, um, and they seem to uh, be kind of sexy for like a year or so. A lot of them had just moved out or were kicked out of home or whatever and um, living with their parents and for the, were for the first time living on their own. and. Um, they didn't have water a lot of times, didn't have electricity, didn't have um, the products that we just discussed. So they didn't have the soaps and lotions and, and so forth. So um, when you're young, it's kind of easy. It's, 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 it's very difficult not to look good when you're young, when you're 19, 20 years old. But um, when you, after that- um, When without, you're 30. Well, and without access to, um, lotions and, and soaps and water and electricity and so forth, you, uh, it's difficult to retain that kind of um, useful, you know, beauty and um, attractiveness. Something that I like about the Krusties is that I do admire their, their renunciation of all the, uh, of all the rules in our society, like that you have to have a job and that you have to have an apartment. It's, and that, it's, a, it's very, it's kind of hippie. Hippie, punk rock. Right, it's anarchistic yeah. and, uh, which, and rebellious, which I like, Yeah, but I could never live the way they do. Well, that's why we were club kids, because we chose which rules to go against, and yet we, um, uh, well, we've always said that club kids were punk rockers and yuppies put together, because we, we rebelled against a lot of the rules and um, didn't want to have normal jobs and, and didn't want to have, didn't want to subscribe to normal 
ways of looking and everything, but we wanted the luxuries. We wanted money. We wanted um, nice apartments and we wanted, um, uh, for, you know, money, money fame, fame, success, and glamour. Yes, yeah, so and we wanted to spend money frivolously and all that. So, um, whereas punk rockers would say, would dress up in their mohawks and they'd say, Why are you staring at me? We would say, We would dress up in you know, what our, our look was. And then we Why say, aren't you staring at us? Or, or now that you're staring at I me, mean, give me $100. <laughs> um, so, um, Money was money was very important to us. Yeah, well, I think it's important to the crusties too. They just want to admit it. They want to admit it. We yes, that was the difference. Was we would we would we were not ashamed to admit it. And one of the things that um, I, I dislike about the crusties is that sometimes they can be very hostile. Like when I was uh, like a club kid going to, especially like in the eighties and nineties. Oh, yeah, the club kids could never be hostile. Well, the club kids were hostile too, but what I'm saying is that the crusties I always thought were unnecessarily hostile to club kids because they thought I don't know I guess they thought we were posers or or I don't know well, what they thought well, about us, but they I often had experiences where crusties were really mean to me and were would like throw cigarettes or bottles at me if I walked by them. It happens. Um, I think it's probably a comment. It's probably a little bit of what you're saying, the, the, the poser thing, because. In some ways, we were posers, but I mean, in some ways, we were very not posers. I mean, we were very authentic in our inauthenticity sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but uh, there was probably some jealousy in there too, because um, we were living because that we were fabulous, and they and we're living not by the rules. Um, we were doing kind of what they wanted to do, but being successful at it um, and financially successful. I mean, and for all the protest, you know, protestations they they could make about how they don't care about money and they don't whatever yeah why are they always begging for money well, yes exactly um, <laughs> they don't care about money they do they do care about money um, and they they know that they they need it to survive so um, well they, that's my big beef with the crusties is that they're always fucking begging you know, because beef, your beef with I do, well it's, beef with it's my beef because I feel like you know if you're gonna live that lifestyle then just like live it and go you know as extreme as you can but then don't like beg people to for money to support you doing because that. otherwise then then who is the poser well i mean you're, if you're just gonna whore yourself by begging then just do something then actually whore yourself for more money than just like you know pennies and dimes, don't be ashamed to admit that you're whoring yourself by begging i mean you know well they're not i don't think they're ashamed to, to beg well but, but i feel like but, but begging is like the least profitable Way you can spend your time. Oh, I don't know. You know, there was there was a beggar um, by the uh, Wendy's um, when I was in Patterson that um, had me completely convinced. I mean, completely convinced. And I would give him like a dollar, fifty cents, or whatever, whatever my change was at the, when I when I leave um, down at the Wendy's. And um, I don't know who it was that told. Oh, I know. It was um, uh, the, the police sergeant when I moved into the building when the when they came. They um, they were discussing. Um, they were discussing this particular um, guy at Wendy's and how he made hundreds and hundreds of dollars a day um, doing that. Um, and, and then and it dawned on me then, um, you know, I gave him a dollar or 50 cents or whatever every time I saw him. And um, there, there was a nonstop stream of people coming out. And in fact, when he wasn't there, he would rent that spot to somebody else <laughs> to stand there and beg because they were making so much money. And um, he, they would dress that way on purpose. Like they would dress in down, you know, in awful clothes and, and whatever on purpose because they knew that if they, you know, wore like regular clothes, that they would never make any money. Well, if you're in New York City, go check out the Krusty Photography Exhibit at the uh, Daniel Cooney Fine Art Gallery. We'll be right back with a bitches want to know question. Remember what it is? Yes. Do you? Yes. And now a word from our sponsor. Why the crusties hate me? Because of the shirt. 
No. Okay, what's the question? What's the question? Jen smiles. Uh, Jen wrote smiles. a question on one of the comment boards of our show asking if you could reminisce about meeting Gigi Allen on the Jane Whitney show. The Jane Whitney show. Um, yeah. I don't even remember that show. Uh, uh, yeah, you weren't on it, but it was, uh, um, it was actually, it was, it was me and Julie and Walt and Richie. And um, all, all three of them, um, they, it was, I think, the last show we did. Because um, at that time, um, we'd felt that, that we'd done and said everything we could do and say on these shows. And um, they all kind of gave me an, an, an ultimatum um, that was sort of like, um, if anything awful happens to us on the show, or you know, if the audience... Because, you know... You're going to pay for it. Yeah. You were on Richard Bay, I think, with us. When, yes. When the audience turned on us and like wanted to kill us, and we had to have the, the limousine had to like come into the building <laughs> and pick us up and drive us out because they were ready to kill us outside. Good times. Um, but, um, so there were... And even that like, didn't make me feel that uncomfortable. No, it didn't. You know, <laughs> um, Speaking of comfort... I, I kind of thought it was cool. But, um, but and that was all Ruth's fault because the guy said, uh, asked if she was, are you gay, queer? And she said, why, are you looking for a date? And that they like threw things at us, <laughs> but um, uh, but they were, but Julie especially um, said that if anything like that happens again, that's the end of it. And the only reason she went on was to was to um, promote Project X because mm -hmm. that was her, you know, her baby. Um, and um, and Richie too was like, we didn't know that Gigi Allen was going to be on the show. They just asked us to be on the show. And when we saw Gigi, Richie especially flipped out because it, we weren't get separate guests. They put us all on the stage together. So it was Michael Allen, Walt Paper, Richie Rich, Julie Jules, Gigi Allen, all five club kids or all five whatever. And um, they were just, I mean, I didn't really care, but um, Julie and Richie especially were furious. I think um, Walt actually might have known who he was and um, kind of thought it was like a little bit edgy, artsy, you know. Um, but um, Rich, Richie, took every opportunity to let the audience in, the, in the, the studio audience and at home know, we do not know this man, we are not his friend, we just met him today, Michael brought us on the show, and we don't, we don't know, you know. And, um, and, uh, and, then he would, and then every time Gigi would start on one of his rants against, whatever he was ranting against, everything, um, Richie would get up with the, on roller skates and go, woo! And I go back and forth and throw money into the audience and like in the mirror and like ignore uh, Gigi Allen <laughs> because um, he was just so awful and like against everything we were like you know and um, I guess he um, he said on the show that he was going to kill himself or something and then uh, lo and behold either the day next day or uh, he he or his girlfriend went to Disco Two Thousand that week and that for the first time. And then, um, I don't know whether it was an accident or what, but he died. I think it was an overdose. Um, the Curse of Disco 2000. The Curse of Disco 2000. And, um, and then it was in all the papers. Um, well, what was actually in all the papers was that I was calling all the papers, telling them that we were on the show with Gigi when he uh, made that announcement. Um, so um, I guess that's my reminiscence of uh, Gigi on and the Jane Whitney show experience. See you next time. Bye.